Hello everybody and welcome to the latest issue of the Wiser newsletter. In this week's uh, issue I'm going to be covering four things. I'm going to be talking about deep fakes, I'm going to be in crypto corner, I'm going to be covering non-fungible tokens, I'm going to touch on augmented reality and I'm going to just summarize in a mobile dentist which is using a mobile phone technology. So let's start with what's the fuss about deep fakes? The recent spate of Tom Cruise videos on TikTok have raised the profile of deep fakes and the ease with which they can fall. These particular ones were created by a visual effects specialist called Chris Oom under the giveaway name of at Deep Tom Cruise. The clips took months to create using AI from the deep face lab and uh, CGI, plus many hours of manual manipulation. They're not as easy as they look. Now, Cruise is not the first to be deep faked. Some of my favorite celebrity videos include a 1970s Wonder Woman, Linda Carter, superimposed onto Gail Caddo in the 21st century version of the character, the superhero. There's a roundtable discussion with Tom Cruise, Robert Downey Jr., Jeff Goldblum and Ewan McGregor, which is frankly a dinner party I'd love to have. Salvador Dali is brought back to life by ad agency CS&P. And Bill Hader on Saturday Night Live is definitely one to watch because they subtly morph into Al Pacino and Arnold Schwarzenegger as he tells stories to the host. Now, all this stuff is lighthearted fun, but there is actually a sinister side to deep fakes. A couple of years ago, a UK CEO took a call from his boss at the German parent company. He was instructed to transfer 220,000 euros to a supplier in Hungary. Within hours, the money had been shifted to accounts in Mexico and it was gone. It was later revealed that the scammers had used artificial intelligence to deep fake the voice of the boss and pull off the con. And of course, deepfakes have been linked with both revenge porn and the faking of celebrities in movies, which they frankly would not have auditioned for. In 2019, California passed a bill that banned the use of deepfake technology specifically because of the uh, rise in fake porn. So what is a deepfake? A deepfake refers to a specific kind of synthetic media where an image, video or audio of a person is swapped with someone else. Deepfakes leverage artificial intelligence, machine learning and neural networks to perform the manipulation. These methods are based on deep learning and the training of generative neural networks, also known as GANs. It is the application of these dueling neural networks that compete in a zero sum game contest that put GANs at the heart of deepfake technology. Now, I'm not going to try and explain it to you, but there is a link to a plain English explainer if you go over to the uh, newsletter itself. When it comes to protecting against deep fakes, there are some new innovative technologies from firms like Amber Authenticate. Amber is a video authentication tool that generates crypto hashes of original footage and it stores them indelibly on a public blockchain. When new video footage is later run through the Amber algorithm, the hashes of the new images can be compared to the original to indicate if that's a deep fake. In Crypto Corner this week, I look at non-fungible tokens and digital artworks and selling tweets for money. Now, NFTs or non-fungible tokens, as they're in their long form, are the mechanism that's allowing digital artwork, music and tweets to be tokenized as a crypto collectible item to own and trade. This is the new way to interact with art, culture and collecting on the internet. Auction sites like Super Rare list digital collectible art that is secured by cryptography and tracked on a blockchain. If you'd like to see what a crypto transaction looks like, there's a link in the newsletter and it, you'll actually see the mechanics of what a, a crypto uh, hash uh, token on the blockchain would look like. Valuables is an auction website that lets you turn your tweets into an NFT and then sell them. The most high profile of these is from a guy called Jack Dorsey, who's the CEO and founder of Twitter. He's currently selling Just Setting Up My Twitter, which was the very first tweet. In Dorsey's case, the money, is, is, which is currently bidding at two and a half million dollars when I last looked, he's going to help charities in off Africa. And there's some sense to this valuation because there's only ever going to be one first tweet. But when you look at valuables, it is rather surprising to see that some people are selling or buying uh, tweets of pictures of spaghetti or when Carney uh, tweeted to say that he liked McDonald's. Frankly, those I don't quite get. 
Um, but anyway, I'm going to I'm throwing myself in the deep end and I've just loaded nine years of opinionated nonsense from my own Twitter archive to see if anybody's going to start bidding for any of that. Thirdly, augmented reality and the chatbots that resurrect the dead. Now, earlier this year, Microsoft revealed that they've been given the green light for a patent that could enable us to live forever. The technology uses a cocktail of virtual reality, artificial intelligence, chatbots and holograms. Taking input from the individual's online footprint, the tech proposes to create a digital representation of the subject. This is the stuff of science fiction that was portrayed in a 2013 episode of Black Mirror. In it, a bereaved woman uses AI to recreate an accurate version of her deceased boyfriend from his social media profile. In the real life version, the Microsoft patent does the same. Using AI and machine learning, the person's online footprint of posts, pictures, audio and various other pieces of personal information is used to recreate a digital profile of their mannerisms, character and personality. The extent to which it could be good enough to feed a chatbot and convince you that you're chatting with a realistic version of eGranny has yet to be seen, but the concept of augmented alternity is gaining momentum. In a TV documentary last year, a South Korean mother was reunited with a virtual reality version of her daughter, who had passed four years earlier at a young age. Using motion capture technology, a virtual reality headset and haptic gloves, the mother was able to walk, talk and play with a digital version of her daughter. Last October, Kanye West bought Kim Kardashian a hologram of her late father to celebrate her 40th birthday. The reality TV star described it as the most thoughtful gift of a lifetime, although apparently not thoughtful enough to keep the marriage going, but that's another story. Whilst the tech is still in its formative stage, the subject of augmented eternity raises many questions. Could a software agent become our digital heir? Could our digital identities become sentient? Who would own a digital profile and the data that it is built from? There are currently no laws governing digital reincarnation. Rights to data privacy after death are far from set in stone. And there's currently no way for anyone to opt out of being digital, digitally resurrected. This legal ambiguity currently leaves room for private companies to make chatbots out of a digital footprint of the deceased. And finally, from the surgery to the smartphone, how telemedicine is changing the delivery of healthcare. The pandemic has accelerated a number of digital trends, none more so than in telehealth. This is the remote provision of healthcare through the use of technology. The scope is huge, from a more effective home delivery of prescription drugs, to the delivery of healthcare for geographically isolated patients, from addressing a nation's mental health needs via WeChat, to providing 24 seven video access to medical experts experts with Teledoc. A key driver for telehealth is reducing cost. Healthcare in the United States, for example, accounts for 17.9% of GDP, and it's forecast to rise to almost 20% by 2027. The other is accessibility, bringing the doctor, dentist or clinician into the patient's home rather than making them travel to the health centre. A more effective use of overworked medical resources for the majority of incidents. Telemedicine is a subject I will be covering in more detail shortly in a Wiser in 5 article. In the meantime, take a look at this piece I wrote recently with Instant Dentist. This is a founder interview published on my blog page at salesclub.spaces. For the article, I had a Zoom call with CEO Alok Shukla about his dental digi den digital, about his digital dentist using mobile phone tech, 3D printers, and virtual consultants in a human plus tech app. Thank you for listening, and I hope you're now a little bit wiser. If you go to Troy, the glory will be yours. The world will remember your name. Achilles! Get out, Prince of Troy.